Thank you very much. Uh, well, what are the discrepant data of the CLGBN Fire 3 studies? First of all, in 2014, uh, cetuximab and bevacizumab were considered equal in their uh, first line uh, treatment. One year before, it was con uh, cetuximab was significantly better than bevacizumab. This is what was considered by the FIRE 3 study. Two years later, there was an agreement between them that on the left side, uh, cetuximab is better than bevacizumab. But again, in 2017, the disagreement reappeared. In CMS1, as you can see here, bevacizumab was better in CLGB. Cetuximab was better in FIRE 3. There was some agreement in the CMS2 where the two studies concluded that cetuximab may be better. But again, in CMS3, cetuximab was much better in the CLGB study, and FIRE 3 was inconclusive. In, uh, on the contrary, in CMS4, there was no final conclusion if bevacizumab or cetuximab are better, but uh, definitely uh, FIRE3 concluded that cetuximab is the best treatment for CMS4. So back to square one, think. The data of FIRE3 and CLGB are organized here according to the median overall survival obtained by each CMS subtype. And, as you can see here, FIRE-3 used irinotecan. CLGB used oxaliplatin. Now, if you use cetuximab in CMS-1, we obtained two different results. 17.9 survival benefit and 11.7. So there is no consistency. So it doesn't make sense. If the same biological, cetuximab, in the same microenvironment, CMS1, gives a different response, the third variable is probably responsible for this difference, maybe the chemotherapy. The same we can see here, 40 month and 30 month. How come that a 10 month difference should be with a, the same biological? So, Let's ignore for the moment the results generated by the two studies. And there must be an interplay between the biological chemotherapy and the microenvironment. I, we asked ourselves, can we deduce from the avail available scientific data the results of the interplay between the factors in, for each CMS subtype? The relative response for Bevacizumab was obtained at ESMO 2017, and to some surprise, it suggests that the response to Bevacizumab is dependent on the specific tumor microenvironment. As you can see in CMS4 and CMS1, there is less response to Bevacizumab. So how can we explain this? Looking at the microenvironment, we see that in CMS4 there are a lot of cancer-associated fibroblasts and myeloid and monocytic cells as well in CMS4 and CMS1 is the same. So can the excess of fibroblasts and monocytes explain the relative resistance to bevacizumab in the CMS1 and CMS4? Let's see. Uh, cancer-associated fibroblasts and tumor-associated macrophages mediate resistance to bevacizumab by release of alternative pro-angiogenic factors. If we inhibit with bevacizumab, it is not enough to prevent angiogenesis in a fibroblast and monocyte-rich microenvironment such as CMS1 and CMS4. And this may explain why the response to bevacizumab in this two microenvironments is less than in the other microenvironments. And this is the, uh, uh, re the references. 
saying that uh, PDGF mediates the angiogenic and tumorogenic properties of fibroblasts associated with tumor refractory to anti-VEGF treatment, and that fibroblasts are Trojan horses mediators of resistance to VEGF therapy. And what about cetuximab? We learned at ASCO GI that these are the responses in the different microenvironments. Despite the fact that, that all the tumors were RAS wild type, the response to cetuximab is actually dependent on the tumor microenvironment. As you know, I here combine the responses of cetuximab and bevacizumab. And as you know, in the left side, CMS2 and CMS4 are predominant. So what can we see here is that on the left side, characterized by excess of CMS2 and CMS4, cetuximab is more effective than bevacizumab, actually explaining this agreement that cetuximab on the left side is better than bevacizumab. And what on the right side? On the right side, we can see that in CMS1, the responses to cetuximab and bevacizumab are probably the same, but a better response is in CMS3, explaining probably the other observation that bevacizumab is better than cetuximab on the right side. Is there a difference in the response to chemotherapy between the CMS subtypes? Well, for 15 years, we considered that oxaliplatin and irinotecan have identical clinical effects. This study showed that the response to oxaliplatin is dependent also on the tumor microenvironment. Is the sensitivity to irinotecan also dependent on the CMS subtypes? Yes. Several years ago, we, show, we saw this study explaining that here CMS4 is the best responder to irinotecan, followed by CMS1, and less response in CMS2 and 3. So what do we learn from this? We learned that CMS4 is responsive to irinotecan, irrespective of the biologicals. CMS2 is responsive to oxaliplatin, irrespective of the biologicals. And some types of colorectal cancer have primary resistance to oxaliplatin or irinotecan. But we know that biologicals, bevacizumab and cetuximab, synergize with oxaliplatin and irinotecan to overcome the tumor resistance, improve chemotherapy effectiveness. So assuming that cetuximab synergism with the chemotherapy should be proportional to its activity in each microenvironment, like in CMS1, one can assume that because of this low activity, the addition to oxaliplatin and irinotecan will be small, but it will be there. In CMS2, cetuximab works much better. It can add a little to oxaliplatin, which already works very well there, but it can add much more to irinotecan. In CMS3, it may, be, may add to both. And in CMS4, it may add a little to irinotecan and much more to oxaliplatin. Surprise. In a fibroblast and monocyte-rich microenvironment, oxaliplatin may antagonize the cetuximab effects. This is the tumor. These are the cancer-associated fibroblasts that were mentioned here in CMS4. These are the monocytes. And what happens? There are also immune cells. We add cetuximab and oxaliplatin. They inhibit the growth, in, they inhibit, inhibit, uh, in growth and induce apoptosis. Cetuximab may activate the immune cells, but oxaliplatin has off-target effects on cancer-associated fibroblasts, which produce IL-17, inducing resistance in cancer stem cell and providing their survival, and TGF-beta, which activates AKT, inhibiting the cellular cetuximab 
effects. Furthermore, TGF beta inhibits the immune responses induced by cetuximab. Therefore, in a fibroblast and monocyte-rich microenvironment such as CMS1 and CMS4, one may expect that oxaliplatin may induce some antagonism to its effects or its synergies with, oxal with cetuximab. And indeed, fibroblasts in colon cancer were considered traitor by chemotherapy. So, if this is true, in a fibroblast-rich monocy uh, fibroblast and monocyte-rich microenvironment, there should be a decrease in the effectivity of these drugs in CMS1 and in CMS4. So if this is true, can it explain the apparent contradictory and conflicting data of the CLGB and FHIR? Let's see. Because CMS, because uh, cetuximab has a low activity here, it can cooperate with oxaliplatin and with rinotecan, but the microenvironment may reduce this effect. That's what happened probably in the studies. In, in, with oxaliplatin, we got only 11.7 month median survival, a very poor survival, probably impaired by the microenvironment. But with irinotecan, the response was acceptable, 18 months. What happened in CMS2? Well, we expect here the add 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 additive uh, effect of cetuximab on oxaliplatin and a higher effect, a better effect with irinotecan. That's what happened. The results are almost identical. What happens in CMS3? Well, I cannot predict. Uh, cetuximab will help both. It helped better the oxaliplatin in this case. And what will happen in CMS4? Cetuximab will add a little bit to irinotecan, much more to oxaliplatin, but the microenvironment may deteriorate this response. And that's what happened. A 10-month difference between irinotecan and uh, cetuximab compared to oxaliplatin. So it's not, it's the same uh, biological cetuximab in CMS4, but it is not its fault. There is something else that reduced the result. And what happens with bevacizumab? Something very strange. Look here, with oxaliplatin, Bevacizumab was better than with irinotecan in CMS1, CMS2, and CMS4. Almost a nine-month difference here and almost one-year difference here. So does it mean that oxaliplatin is a better partner for bevacizumab than irinotecan? I never, th never find such a result, but these are the apparent data. If so, they can explain the differences between the studies. Look, if oxaliplatin synergizes with bevacizumab, it will make this curve go up. And if oxaliplatin antagonizes some of the cetuximab effects, it causes the curve to go down. So the curves come closer one to the other. On the other hand, in the FHIR3 study, cetuximab works very well with irinotecan, and the curve is higher. On the contrary, irinotecan and bevacizumab, it's stuck. Somehow it's stuck. Can you help me? Oh, irinotecan and bevacizumab probably work worse. Therefore, these curves come apart. So the conclusions. The response to treatment is not dependent solely on a single variable, such as a biological, but on a complex synergistic antagonistic interaction between the biologicals, chemotherapy backbone, and the specific tumor microenvironment. 
The original question of the studies was, what is the best biological to combine with chemotherapy, assuming that oxaliplatin and irinotecan have identical activity? <laughs> but the actual question is, what is the best chemotherapy plus biological combination for each colon cancer subtype? And indeed, CLGB answered a different question than FIRE3. CLGB answered, what is, the, uh, what is the correlation between oxaliplatin, biologicals, and microenvironment? FIRE3, what is the interaction between irinotecan uh, biologicals and microenvironment? Therefore, these studies are not controversial or discrepant. They are complementary. Finally, what is the best biological combination for each subtype? Well, here you can see that oxaliplatin bevacizumab is the best for CMS1. For CMS2, irinotecan or oxaliplatin can be the best combination with cetuximab. In CMS3, definitely oxaliplatin and cetuximab. In CMS4, definitely cetuximab and irinotecan. What do you see? That in three subgroups, oxaliplatin is the best chemotherapy, and in three other subgroups, cetuximab is the best chemotherapy. If we look for the left side, if we don't know what is the CMS classification, and we look at the left side, CMS2 and CMS4, then the best combination should be actually irinotecan and oxaliplatin, because irinotecan and oxaliplatin gives here 38 months, very close to 42, and in CMS4, it gives 40 months, much better than 30 months with oxaliplatin. If the presented analysis will be extended to sidedness and further validated, it opens new avenues for optimization of the personalized treatment in the different metastatic colorectal cancer subtypes. Last year, this was the conclusion that the fight is on. I think that fight is over. And thank you. <laughs>